Unit identity is a term that's been thrown around a lot in the Fire Emblem community, especially in recent years because unit customizability has been higher than ever in the last few games. There's no official definition of this term, but I think a fair one would be that unit identity is a combination of the features that make a Fire Emblem unit feel distinct and unique compared to other Fire Emblem units. Basically, any factor that impacts the perception of a unit. Even if two units are mechanically similar, if they feel distinct to the player, that's the most important thing. There's a ton that goes into what makes up a unit's identity, including stats, aesthetics, joining situation, and more. Generally, when people talk about unit identity, they're focused more on the gameplay features of a unit versus features like personality or character, but when the mechanics of a unit represent a unit's character well, that tends to result in a strong unit identity. So a strong or unique character can contribute to a unit feeling unique as well. A common criticism of recent Fire Emblem games is that unit identity has been eroded compared to earlier entries and that units can feel very samey now. I'm going to talk about how true I think that is, how important it is, and what I think makes for a unit with a strong identity. But first, a big thank you to my patrons, Helix, Aikipu, Lucy Sev, Van West, Acrobatic Jazz, A Family of Trees, Romeo, Tim Strait, Aaron Geddon, Emma, and Zakar. I really appreciate your support. If you want to get early access to videos, shoutouts, and videos, and have access to polls that influence the content schedule, or if you just want to support the content, you'll find a link in the video description. Okay, let's start by talking about some of the things that can contribute to a unit having a strong identity. The obvious one is a unit stats. Imagine two units, one with high defense, low speed, and high strength. The other having high speed, low defense, and all right strength, but with a high critical chance. You can imagine these two units would play pretty differently. And what's more, I would bet you even have some image in your head for what these two units might look like relative to each other. So stats can go a long way towards defining a unit's identity and influencing how we use the unit. A unit's class is also something commonly cited that can contribute to unit identity, but I want to dig into that a bit. Specifically, what are the unique features offered by a class that make a unit feel distinct? This might seem obvious, classes determine quite a bit about what a unit can do and how they function in gameplay, but something that sometimes goes overlooked is how class contributes to a unit's presentation and communicates information to the player. Consider two units like Gi and Raven in Fire Emblem 7. To me, these units feel pretty distinct, but it's not because of any mechanical differences in their classes. Their classes provide almost nothing that distinguishes them from each other until they promote. They use the same weapons, they have the same move, they even promote with the same item. Instead, what we're getting out of their classes here is largely aesthetic and thematic value. Both of them are fast sword units that promote from the same item, but Raven being a mercenary and Gi being a Myrmidon tells a different story. Gi with his fancy crit animations feels like a fast, skillful sort of unit, while Raven feels more bulky and strong. These differences are reflected in their growth rates and stats, but players can't see growth rates, so the way some of this information is communicated to you is through their presentation, which is determined by their class. So here, even though Raven and Gi's classes aren't mechanically very distinct, their flavor and aesthetic paints a unique picture and makes them feel different. Often, even class names can be evocative and leave an impression on the player. Mercenary and Knight, for example, both carry meanings in the name alone that can tell the player something about the character the class is applied to. A good example of how the aesthetics and theme of a class can change how a unit is perceived is a unit like Amelia in Fire Emblem 8. Amelia can go down a variety of different class paths, one of which ends in the general class. A lot of players think of General Amelia as a very bulky unit, but at 10-10-1, she only has 12 defense, which is just two more than a not-that-bulky 10-1 Paladin Bronze, and four more than if she was in the same level but in Paladin. She will almost certainly not be among your bulkiest units when she gets promoted, but a lot of players think of General Amelia as a pretty bulky unit. I think this perception of bulk comes mostly from the expectation people have for the General class and the armored aesthetic, rather than just from her stats. The reason I'm harping so much on aesthetic and theme for each class is because it's basically the first thing you see when you get a character. And for characters where their classes are fairly similar, it's a major differentiator. Before you even do combat with a unit, you see a unit's class and what it makes them look like. In a lot of cases, classes don't mechanically set themselves apart that much. Things like stats and growths for your units can be anything regardless of class in a lot of games, and many games don't have a lot of special class features like skills. 
Unit stats and growths in these games often conform to the expectations one might have based on a unit's class, such as Oswin having good strength and defense, but he could have that stat spread in any class. Even so, units can feel very different in these games, and class exclusivity can help with that by providing units with a somewhat unique aesthetic. A great example of this is Hawkeye in Fire Emblem 7. For most players, he's the only Berserker you get, and while his class does have something unique that sets it apart statistically in the form of its crit bonus, another thing that sets it apart is its unique animations. Hawkeye having a unique sprite and animation and being the only Berserker in your army assuming you don't promote Dart makes him immediately memorable. Even for more common classes, people often associate GBA Fire Emblem animations with the selection of characters that can have them. When I think of GBA's Sick Myrmidon animations, for example, the unit I'm thinking about is Gi. Whereas in games with reclassing, I tend not to associate a class's animation strongly with a specific unit. Basically, the more units that share a feature, whether that be their animations, their stats, or some skill, the less unique those features feel and the less I associate them with a specific unit. Of course, not every class is as similar as GBA Mercenary and Myrmidon, and there are meaningful mechanical differences between classes that make them actually function differently during play. What we pretty much always get from classes stats-wise is promotion bonuses and maybe a growth rate adjustment depending on the game. In games with reclassing we also get class bases, but in games without reclassing unit stats are just whatever the devs made the unit stat. Beyond that, classes can also feature differences in a unit's movement and weapon types or provide skills or amount. All of these features can contribute to a unit's identity and are tied to class in most games. So, class can do a lot to make a unit feel unique, both by what they provide statistically and by what they communicate to the player through their theme and aesthetic. Another thing that can make units feel unique and distinct is their join situation. This might seem a bit odd, but I believe that if you took a unit and changed around their join situation, you could often completely change the perception of that unit. Look at Medir and Jamka in Fire Emblem 4. Their join situations couldn't be much more different. Midir joins us after we witness him get one shot by a boss in a cutscene, and with an iron bow at that. In contrast, Jamka joins partway through Chapter 1, in the middle of a big forest, and with a killer bow. So his lack of horse doesn't present immediate issues since we're in a forest anyway, and he can accurately start killing dudes immediately with his killer bow, while Midir is mostly limited to providing chip. Of course, after this chapter, you could just give Jamka's killer bow over to Midir, and now you have a killer bow on a horse. But first impressions are important and shape how players may perceive these units. Additionally, join situation also impacts what your stats look like relative to enemies. In Fire Emblem 1, Jagen is likely to have fairly similar stats to Medea when she joins, but Jagen joins in the early game where enemies and your allies are weaker, and Medea joins in the mid game when you have units that have eclipsed Jagen already. So these units feel very different because of their join time. Jagan had an opportunity to be a combat god, while Medea generally doesn't have that opportunity. The result is that people think of Jagan pretty fondly, while Medea is much less popular. He doesn't get to fill a unique role in the army like Jagan does because she doesn't join when she would be able to fill that role. In this way, join time can impact what a unit can do and how we feel about a unit. In games with personal skills, those can also help a character carve a niche out for themselves by having a skill that nobody else has access to. So those are some of the factors that can contribute to unit identity. Stats, skills, aesthetics, and join situation. There's a lot of other little things that can contribute to a unit's identity, but these are some of the big ones. So let's get into why people say that unit identity has been eroded in recent Fire Emblem games. I'm going to be talking a lot about Engage here, because Engage is the most recent Fire Emblem game, and its high amount of customization, in my view, does erode unit identity a bit, but a lot of what I'm talking about here also applies to Three Houses and Fates as well. In Engage, reclassing is readily available, and your stats and skills are highly malleable through things like rings, skills, rallies, meals, and tonics. This makes for a lot of fun if you're into customizing your units, or if you want to be able to make your favorite characters fill a variety of different roles in different playthroughs. But it limits two of the bigger ways to set a unit apart from other units. Stats can fail to feel as distinct when other units can be made to hit similar stat thresholds, and flexible reclassing limits character aesthetics as reclassing a unit into another class will change them into the outfit associated with that class instead of their unique personal outfit. 
With so much customization in Engage, the main differences between units becomes their personal stats and growths, which are not easily visible to the player, their join situation, and their personal skill. One thing I do want to note is that even in modern games like Engage, where unit identity is often criticized as being weak, the differences between units are still meaningful. Units still have niches they can perform, some units are still stronger than others or are better suited to certain classes compared to others, like Citrine being one of the stronger magical snipers because her high magic allows her to more easily hit one-shotting thresholds with the Radiant Bow and Astro Storm. So even when stats are very malleable, there are still meaningful differences between units. However, these differences still feel smaller and a little less unique than they would in other games because we can get plenty of other units to having a bonkers high magic stat, for instance. It just takes a little more doing as we'll have to use things like rings and tonics. Joining situation also still remains a big deal in helping units make meaningful first impressions in modern games like Engage. Marin and Kagetsu, for example, have pretty similar personal stats, but one of them is thought of as a combat god, while the other is thought of as merely a good or even very good unit. Even though they can actually fill an extremely similar role on your team. I suspect that perceptions of these units might be flipped if you flipped their join time. This goes to show that the way that you join the army in the early impression you set is still very important. Kagetsu joins way stronger than the rest of your army in the middle of a very hectic map, and this makes him stand out. While Marin joins in a much less dramatic chapter after you've already picked up a few powerful pre-promotes, so she doesn't stand out quite as much when she joins. Still, even with the ways that units can set themselves apart and engage, it does feel like the game with the weakest unit identities to be. The two biggest reasons for that being a lack of unique unit aesthetics and a lack of units built in a way that supports their narrative. Let's start with the lack of unique aesthetics. Because this one makes me kind of sad. Units in Engage have a unique outfit for the class they join your army as, so Goldberry has a unique hero outfit, Panette has her cool dress and Berserker. But if you reclass the unit out of their base class, they lose their outfit and instead wear the generic one for the class. This may not seem like a big deal, but I think it is. When units have unique outfits or animations, it sets them apart and makes them more memorable. Imagine how many more people would use Paladin Amber if he had a unique animation where he rode an alpaca. Even if you didn't use him, you would hear about it, you would see screenshots of it, and it would make him stick out more. Obviously, Fire Emblem can't make a unique outfit for every class for every unit. There's just too many classes for that. But there has to be some way to do this better, whether that be letting us toggle personal outfits in any class or limiting reclassing to a few options like Awakening, but providing a unique outfit for each one. A unique outfit would just help each unit pop so much more compared to looking like a slightly less generic version of whatever class they're in. The second thing that really hurts unit identity in Engage is that units aren't often built in a way that supports their character's narrative. What I mean by this is that there aren't many unique features that tie a unit's character to their mechanical performance. An example of another game doing this well is Amelia again in FE8. One of Amelia's standout features as a character is that she's essentially an untrained rookie, and the game represents that by putting her in a unique trainee class where her stats are bad but she grows fast. She also has a unique sprite that makes her small and clumsy, and this makes perfect sense for a fledgling soldier. So this is a case where a unit is getting a lot out of the unique features of her class, which is designed to represent aspects of her character. This combines to make a very memorable unit. Making units like this is more difficult, though, in games with malleable stats and reclassing. We can look at a unit like Jean, who has two standout features when he joins. One, he's a kid with a lot of potential, and this is represented through his personal skill that doubles his class growths. Perfect. The second is his desire to become a healer. When you recruit him, he tells you that his dream is to become a doctor, and he's constantly talking about wanting to save lives. And to that end, he comes in a staff-using class. But these features sort of work against each other. You don't need stats to be a good staffer, so there's a lot of incentive to reclass him into something else to take advantage of his personal skill. But then he's not a doctor anymore. Engage just doesn't have many characters where it feels like their character is represented super well by their mechanics, outside of maybe their personal skill. This kind of makes sense because characters are very malleable, and you can't make a unit stay in a class that fits their character, but it is a little disappointing. One area where Engage and other recent Fire Emblem games do succeed at setting units apart, though, is through those personal skills. At times, personal skills can feel a little weak or niche, but strong ones that are relative to a character's story can help make them feel distinct. 
A good example of this is Alir's divinely inspiring skill that makes units deal more damage and take less damage when standing next to them. This ties into Alir's role as the Divine Dragon and provides Alir a unique role in gameplay. Engage also sets some units apart by providing them special classes and thus unique class skills as well. Alchrist, for example, feels a little more distinct than the generic sniper because of his access to Luna, as well as his unique outfit and animations. But naturally, in a game with reclassing, you can't give every unit a unique class. Overall, the more malleable the stats, reclassing, and skills are in a game, the less unique individual units are going to feel. There are a few possible solutions to this. One is that you could keep reclassing, but make stats a little less malleable. Fewer tools for increasing stats would make units with high stats in specific areas stick out more. If Citrine is the only unit that can meet a certain stat threshold, that's a meaningful niche for her. Another thing you could do is limit reclassing. And this doesn't have to mean getting rid of reclassing. In Awakening, reclassing is present, but units are limited to a smaller selection of options. And the options that are available can actually make a unit even a little more memorable like Kellum being able to reclass into Thief because people don't notice him, or Rickon having the same reclassing options as Krom because he looks up to him. Having a limited class pool means each class in that pool can tell us something about the unit. A third thing that you could do is find little ways to give units unique features while keeping reclassing and malleable stats. Personal skills could be stronger, or units could have multiple personal skills and fewer class skills. Aesthetically, you could have units keep their unique outfits in more classes, for example. Of course, whether any of these solutions are desirable or not depends entirely on how much you care about unit identity versus customization. Personally, I would be willing to sacrifice some customization for units that feel more unique and conform better to their character. But what about you? Is unit identity important to you, or do you care more about customization? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments, and if you liked the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next upload. If you want to chat about Fire Emblem more, consider joining the community discord in the video description. Either way, thanks for hanging out, and have yourself a lovely new year.